Hi. In the second part of this uh, lesson on mining geohazards, I want us to look at um, a couple of the potential problems caused by contamination of the environment uh, from mining activity. There are two key things I want to look at uh, in this presentation. First of these is acid mine drainage. Now acid mine drainage is a problem across a lot of mining areas, uh, particularly in metal mine areas, but also it can be one of the consequences of coal mining. Now, when a mine is actually working, these um, underground passages, if they go below the water table, are kept dry by pumping them. But these rocks that are being dug out, whether it's coal or uh, metal ores, can contain pyrite. That's iron sulfide. This pyrite is quite reactive. Uh, it will oxidise. When it oxidises, we get a couple of different products. We get ions of iron that uh, will make a sort of an orange, um, non-crystalline uh, material. And the sulphur that's within that pyrite will be released, and that can dissolve into water and acidify it. When water then gets back into these underground workings, uh, after working stops, we get uh, the water mixing with the weathering products of pyrite and becoming very, very acidic, pH of maybe two or three. That acidic groundwater can then dissolve into it a lot of uh, metals. Metals like uh, arsenic, uh, zinc, cadmium, lead, can all dissolve into this acidified water. When this water then can escape from the mine, and a lot of mines will be, um, when they were dug, were designed to drain water out of it, we'll get this uh, iron precipitate. It makes a, this orange um, gloop, for want of a better word, that will um, be deposited then uh, in the water coming out of the, these mines. It makes acid mine drainage very distinctively orange. Um, it also takes a lot of the oxygen out of the, the water, making it very difficult for life. Um, and there's a problem that can go on for decades after a mine is closed. As we've said, this, uh, these problems will go on for a significant period of time. So much so that very often, uh, the old mines, and these problems can go back to Victorian mines, will have been operated by people and companies that simply no longer exist. The principle that the polluter pays for any damage really doesn't apply. And you're left with uh, governmental bodies, like, for example, the Coal Authority, Natural Resources Wales, the Environment Agency, having to... Um, deal with the consequences of historical mining. This is the, uh, the type of thing you'll see from a fairly typical uh, acid mine uh, drainage coming out of a mine. Dealing with this can be tricky. You can try and prevent uh, water, uh, oxidation occurring by uh, flooding 
uh, mines. But you then have a problem with, um, you know, that water then potentially escaping. You may have to remove the sulfide materials, uh, particularly if it's from a waste dump. That can be expensive. You could uh, put the acid water through uh, like a limestone filter to um, increase its pH and uh, get the uh, any dissolved metals to uh, precipitate. It could be um, preventing water getting into the mine in the first place. But there's a lot of uh, expense and, uh, and, well, difficulties, engineering difficulties, coming up with an effective solution. It does go on. This is a, an example from Cornwall uh, in 1991, 1972, where an old tin mine um, had a, a flush out of uh, this uh, orange acid mine drainage. Now, the problem here wasn't caused by cassiterite, which is an oxide ore. It was caused by the associated pyrite and arsenopyrite. That's uh, fool's gold with arsenic in. Um, become, you know, causing the contamination. What we saw then was 50 million litres uh, of acid mine water getting into uh, a local river. With this uh, acidified water as well, you had dissolved heavy metals, cadmium, for example, uh, which starts to threaten ecosystems. And these can be very expensive things to sort out. This one particular incident cost uh, over 20 million pounds. The way these are dealt with now is with treatment plants. Uh, there are reed beds to try and create a, a bit of a biological solution to removing some of the, uh, the metals within this. Uh, an anaerobic cell then to try and get uh, other uh, metals to precipitate. Um, and then algae also used to remove, again, a different set of metals. This is a summary of these uh, different treatment methods that have to be used uh, before this water can safely be discharged into the river. The other contamination issue, the other contamination issue, is with tailings dams. Now, tailings are the waste material. The, the, uh, the rock that doesn't have a value. It's very, very rare to find a mine that just contains the, the mineral that you're interested in. There'll be a whole series of what we call gang minerals. Um, pyrite is often a, a gang mineral, for example, uh, in sulphide metal ores. Now, these m materials can be uh, crushed up with the original, with the valuable metal mineral, separated out, uh, and then they have to be deposited somewhere. They have to be dumped. This, These dumps are called tailings. Often these will go into um, a tailings lake. So um, as they're sort of washed off from the, uh, the froth material, uh, the froth process that um, is used to separate out the minerals, the uh, wet uh, waste material gets put into a tailings dam to allow it to, to settle. As with any dam, there's a, a, a danger of failure if it's not well engineered. There is, particularly perhaps in less developed countries, uh, a temptation to under-engineer a tailings dam where the, the bare minimum uh, of engineering will be used to contain the tailings lake. Um, this is an example from South Africa, a large um, 
tailings dam, uh, just a, built as an earth fill dam. Uh, after a big storm, water goes over the top of the uh, the dam wall, erodes the earth fill, undermines the dam, and then you have this sort of catastrophic failure of the dam. Uh, the pipes that uh, come out of these dams uh, can fail. Uh, that might also put water into the dam uh, and possibly undermine it, such as here in Guyana. So 3.2 billion litres of, of cyanide uh, filled sludge going out, going out into the environment. This is This is uh, the failure of the outlet from the uh, the dam collapsing, causing uh, tailings to escape, or just a failure of the the actual dam wall. Yeah, this material is quite hazardous, particularly if it's acidic, and you're using. Um, concrete or you're using uh, you know, a, a calcareous calcite filled uh, rock to try and contain it this can uh, you know there can be a reaction um, we were talking in part one about um, instability of the ground we see uh, you know, this instability can affect tailing sounds. But if they're engineered properly, uh, it can be an important part of the mining process. So, we can see that mining can deal with some hazardous materials. It's really important to ensure that uh, the engineering of any site that's dealing with this material is done properly and monitored well to ensure that this material stays contained where it should be. A detailed environmental plan is a really important part of the planning for any modern mine.